episode of the West of Scotland Running Podcast. I'm joined with my co-host, Pete Tucker. He's not from West of Scotland, he's from Landon May. And moved up to Scotland a good few years ago. And he's he just pestered me as of now to start doing a podcast with him. So here we are. So how are you, Pete? You alright, pal? Yeah, good mate, good. I'm not I'm not sure that's that's quite true, but yeah, you're right. I'm not originally from from the west of Scotland, but yeah, obviously London, Kent connections and uh moved up in twenty seventeen and uh that's where I met your good self, which we'll, we'll come on to shortly. But yeah, no, excited just to to chat about all things running related and a bit of banter along the way in the uh the West of Scotland's running podcast. Absolutely. And do I tell them how we met? Okay, yeah, well, I'll, I'll go <laughs> I'll go first then, mate, yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, I can't remember exactly what date it was, but it must have been 2017, so I'd not long moved up, and I think literally I'd, I'd been here less than a week, and one of my good friends had uh, come up in the car with his wife and, and goddaughter to uh, to come and see me, see how I settled in, and so we went along and we did the, the Greenock Park Run uh, on the Esplanade, or the, the Esplanade, as I thought it was pronounced when I first moved up, so yeah. Uh, obviously, we we both know it well. I know um, one of our our guests who we're going to introduce shortly knows knows the Esplanade pretty well as well. So yeah, Green at Park Run, and basically, yeah, I was running along, went off at a, a pace which I should have been comfortable with. wasn't fit. It was uh, I'll get the excuses now. It's post post honeymoon, so I run along, and then all I know is this. Uh, uh, I had a bit of hair at the time, so I'll say this this baldy guy turned around to me and said, "I can't do the accent, obviously, even though I've been up here a while." He was like. Hey mate, do you know we're going at sub seventeen minute pace here? As if to sort of like, it was a bit of like, yeah, just sussing me out. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm fully aware we're going at sub seventeen minute pace here, mate. I'm pretty comfortable with that. And then yeah, we went along, ran together, and uh, I think I just about got the just about got the win. Um, although there's no winning park run, and uh, I was followed home by your good self, and uh, yeah, and uh, then I came down to Inverclyde Flex Club. That was that. Is that right? Is that what that happened? Was that. Yeah, yeah. I think I tried to out-sprint you first, but yeah, you got me in the end. Because you've got that 2.23 marathon in your legs, so I've just not got that. Uh, I didn't I didn't think we were going to mention that just yet, but yeah, there you go, there you go. But yeah, awesome. no, um, good stuff. Awesome. Well, let's get cracking. So, first guest on the first episode. Wow. I gave my, my very good friend, Derek Hawkins, a wee text saying, Derek, help us out come on in and have a wee chat with us and tell the good people of the West of Scotland running community how you've been getting on. And So, without further ado, here he is, Olympic marathon runner from Rio, Derek Hawkins. Hello, hey. Derek. How are you? Sure, yeah. <laughs> how, are you? how are you doing? Not bad. So, you're just Hello. back from Fort Rimmel? Yeah, just the... Uh... Well, oh, it was only about 18 days, long story short, that was as long as we could go for, but yeah, got back on Thursday and heading out to Flagstaff in a couple of weeks as well, so it was kind of like a prelude to the kind of bigger one later on. Nice, nice one. So what's what, what's the bigger one later on? Well, it's just like a, a longer camp sort of thing. It's uh, started, well, hopefully going to do... Amsterdam Marathon in October, so that for it was effectively like the first eighteen days of the build up for it. So mm-hmm. it was kind of kickstart the base, and then by the time you get to Boston, well, not Boston. I'm going to Boston first, then Flagstaff. But um, by the time we get there, it'll kind of be the next blockers training. So that was the kind of I've never really done it before, so I'm kind of trying it out, see what happens. Mm. Sounds, sounds spicy. Brilliant. Um, but anyways, I... Pete is Pete is dying to ask you some questions. I'll I'll, I'll jump in just with the uh, what what we're planning to do, Derek. Obviously, this is a uh, uh, the first episode in its infancy, so we're just just giving it a cracker about talking about some some running related stuff. Um, we'll just yeah. go with a quick uh, a quick fire round that we're going to ask our illustrious mm-hmm. guests, and obviously, yeah, I'm I'm thrilled to have you here to, to chat to us, mate. Starting off with a with a bang, but. Uh, here we go. So, um, just a quick fire round. So, if you could tell me your your best achievement or your uh, proudest PB, proudest PB, uh, it's got to be the marathon. So, my two twelve yeah. forty nine, which I still feel I've got a lot more in there. Um, okay, 
proudest moment. It wasn't actually running the Olympics. It was probably qualifying for it because, okay. yeah, because that probably had Callum, Chris Thompson, Scott Overall. They were sort of like the big three at the time sort of thing, and I managed to beat two of them on the day. So, yeah. Actually, so Segai qualified as well, but uh, at that point, I thought, right, the three slots would go to those guys. So, in fact, I managed to beat those three or oh, two of them. Sorry, Calm ha- hammered me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the, that was the that was the trial. So what what race was that? Sorry, Dale. That was the London Marathon twenty sixteen. So okay, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, great. Okay, um, yeah, we'll probably chat more about that a bit later. But yeah, obviously. Amazing achievement. Um, so question number two, just your, your favourite male male athlete. I grew up watching Bikili, so it's kinda of hard to see past it's kinda of hard to see past him. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a that's a great shout. I'll just quickly I know this is obviously your question, but I, I need to mention a, a close uh, well a teammate of his, countryman, uh, highly Gabriel Salassi for me, but yeah, Bikili was uh, was something else as well. Okay, a uh, favourite um female athlete of all time. has to be, I gave just from the years that I've kind of watched running, it has to be Paula Ratcliffe, like, okay. 15 at London. Yeah. Never actually saw that one. I saw the one the year before, the 2 seven two eighteen, and it was, like, frightening. So I can't even imagine what the 2.15 looked like. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, great. Um, Next one, Uh, what football team do you support? For my sins, uh, Rangers. Been a, been <laughs> okay. Over. And a bit of banter with Sean about that, but yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll hear what Mr. Gethney has to say about that shortly. But fine, moving on. Um, favourite movie? Step Brothers. I know <laughs> it's like Shawshank or something, but it has to be Step Brothers. Okay, great choice. Yeah, we, we actually, um, just briefly, uh, we I won't give too much away. We did a little demo run on, on Zoom before, just to, and we went through a quick fire round, and uh, Shawshank was mentioned by that person that we did the trial with, but... Yep, Step Brothers, great choice, great choice. Uh, we might get a few quotes in from that film later. Okay, uh, most interesting person you've met through running? Uh, Except from Pete. Interesting. Oh, George Gandhi, <laughs> the, the old Loughborough coach. Yeah, yeah. What that man didn't know about running wasn't worth knowing, but well, yeah, the tendency to talk about Seb Cole and then we'd get on to a story about some groundskeeper that he knew as a boy up in Newcastle. That okay. Kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. You were there for a while, but, geez, the <laughs> amount of stories that guy had. Great. Okay, brilliant. Uh, next one, uh, your your favourite race? Favourite race to do? Or... Just in general, or maybe one that you'd like to do, just your, your, even a local one that's sort of quite special to you. I know a lot of us have our own sort of favourite race we like to, to go and turn up to. Uh, okay. Yeah, just any any your favourite race. Favourite one well, that I've actually done. Uh, you, I don't know if you've done it, Pete, but I know Sean's done it. The George Cummins Relays that were in Houston. Yeah, yeah, I have. I yeah, I've been run for a few years. It's only like a two. For those that don't know, it's only like a two point seven mile really loop. But yep. yeah, always the kind of curtain raiser for the winter, and always yeah, it was just a fun one to do. But in terms of ones really? I'd like to do, probably Boston. Okay. Boston's on the uh, on the bucket list, is it? Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, it just looks great. Cool event. Fair enough. Okay, uh, and then we're getting there. Oh, this is a, this is one I'm I'm quite interested to hear what you what, what you're going to say about this one. So I want to know your your favourite session. Favourite session. <laughs> favourite session. Probably what we would call in and out key reps. So. I know you guys have done them a lot, but particularly for the marathon the stuff we would do, it'd be like 20 to 22k worth of kilometre reps, but alternating between two paces. So it's like kind of slightly faster than marathon, slightly slower than, but you can do it over various kind of speeds. Yeah, that sounds tough. Okay. Yeah. And without putting you on the spot too much, obviously, depending on where you are in, in, in the block and what your fitness levels are, just give us a... a, a our listeners, I don't know if we've got any as yet, but hopefully you will give us uh, our listeners a, a rough ballpark figure of what we're talking about then of those two paces for you for yourself. So gonna be a bit try to aim for for the marathon pace. I tend to try and go I think is it 197% marathon, 103%. So it would work out I think when I ran 212, something like 
3.16s and 3.02s or something like that, roughly wow. off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, obviously, if it's on the road, it'll vary. Like a slight yeah. incline, slight downhill, but kind of rough Great. ballpark figure. Okay, great. Well, there we go, Sean. I think I think we can clearly say I think that might just about be sub seventeen pace as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right on yeah. to uh, uh, the last two questions. Uh, so I know this is supposed to be a quick fire round, but I, I like to, I like to talk a lot. Uh, okay, number nine, uh, favorite food. Has to be probably uh, probably a pizza of some sort, some sort of meat pizza. I know I shouldn't be saying that in a running show, but uh, <laughs> aye. okay, yeah, I, I don't think you can beat that to be honest. Brilliant. Okay, and then finally, uh, just your um, if you've got a, a, a phobia or a pet hate, either or. Yeah, phobia. Uh, I can't think of a particular phobia, but except from okay. Pete. <laughs> Sorry. Except from Pete again. Aye, well, aye, but, uh, <laughs> oh, I've got a. It's a quite an odd one. I've got no patience for people in airports. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, I don't know why whenever you go into an airport, whoever's walking in front of you all of a sudden just comes to a complete halt in the middle of like the walkway and you just end up you always walk into the back of them. It's always I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I just and they always seem to walk really slow. I've just you know, and then they come up to the security desk and it's as if they've never been on a plane before. They probably have, okay. but all of a sudden everything's coming out and oh yeah. Do you know what's going to happen now? Guy, but yeah. in an airport now. When you're way to Arizona, now people are going to start booing you your way through security. Like, boo! boo. <laughs> I walk as slow as I want, Hawkins. Uh, yeah, I heard what you said, eh? <laughs> well, I'll need, to, I'll need to remember that then for the... Uh, well, I don't, I don't think it's actually been... Obviously, it's not not uh, in the making as yet because the question's not been asked. But um, when we when we were on Sean Gaffney's stab do, um, obviously, I'll, I'll bear that in mind then, mate. I'll, I'll try and keep, keep the pace going, so... There you go. <laughs> awesome. Great. Well, thanks for that. That's the that's the quick fire round done. Um. So yeah, just just a bit. So just tell how's uh, how's training going in general? Then you are we fit? Are we healthy? I'm quite happy with where it's at at the moment. Uh, a decent first few months of the year. So I ran, I ran pretty well at Trafford 10k. I was just shy of my PB, but then. I actually got a labral hip tear during the actual race, what? which Jesus. wasn't too bad. I had to, I could still train, but I had to kind of really back off a bit, which kind of took its toll into like Berlin half. Uh, then a little bit of Manchester 10 I kind of started building back up again to but just before Manchester 10K, which wasn't the best race. I just went off far too quick and it was pretty hot that day. Um, right. But in terms of where I'm at now, yeah, I'm actually a touch wood. I'm quite happy with how it's going. So, yeah, just have to wait and see. Yeah, because you're kind of returning back to that kind of form you had. You were actually quicker in that form you had when you qualified for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, and you know, obviously quicker when you qualified for Rio as well. Um, mm-hmm. like I said, was that in Frankfurt you ran your PB the two twelve? Uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was the one you did. So twenty nineteen. Yeah. Two yeah, twelve forty nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was exactly thirty two minutes behind Derek that day, so I was. Mm-hmm. That's, exactly. that's that's nothing to be stiffed at, is it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> London qualifier. Absolutely. So. That exact. I know under two forty five. But yeah, but no, I've known you for quite a while now, Derek. And um, obviously your running career you started also with Kobarkin. What age was that? About five years old, so. Uh, I was actually just before I turned 10, Cobartin used to have a come and try night. Uh, it was usually in April, I think I went and did that. Yeah, I did, went, uh, so that was 2000. But, uh, uh, do, pe- do people know how we know each other, Sean? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we, but I know, well, we, we trained together. But well, before, uh, that, green, yeah. but before just, that, it was the Simpsons that brought us together. That was the Simpsons, the Officer Lou. <laughs> Mm, no, you remember people like this MSN days. Oh yeah, MSN Messenger. Yeah, we got chatting and we were like, "What's the name of the cop and the other cop in The Simpsons?" Yep. Oh, so wow. we had oh, I turned out you had a poster in your classroom or something like that, showing that was it had the name on it. So 
Sean yep. comes up to me about six months later and says, Oh, Officer Loon, I'm like, What are you on about? And he's yeah. like, Oh, we were chat. I was like, Ah. Yeah, I had I had hair back then. I had hair so and no, and no blonde moustache. Some hair. I had a wee bit of hair. I think it was at Scottish Schools, I caught you. Scottish yeah. Schools. Maybe Rembrandt like, Shows. It was with the 3K. Derek won the 3K that day. I came last, you know. But I still yeah. broke 10 minutes, so yeah. fine. Um, but yeah, off so that's how I mean Derek got to know each other. And then, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't, didn't know that, but interesting you're hearing about the times there and you, you're saying uh, 10 minutes you were under there, Gaff. But that's, that, that makes me think of a, a famous Mark Pollard quote, actually. One man's uh, tempo is another man's easy run. So it's all relative, and that's the good thing about running. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, so uh, Derek, just to say as well, like uh, obviously we've had a quick uh, perusal of your, your your power of ten, and obviously we well we all, most of us here all know what what you've done, what you've achieved so far anyway, which is pr- pretty impressive. But I was just looking at your your marathons, and I've, obviously I've got them in front of me here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The three quickest, so you've got obviously the PB, the two twelve forty nine, and I'm just really impressed with your your consistency. So you've got a two twelve forty nine, um, I think two twelve fifty seven, London twenty sixteen. And then Valencia 213 12 2022. So mm-hmm. yeah, just uh well congratulations on that that level of consistency, mate. Sure, yeah. Um I guess I can say the other I feel that I can go a wee bit quicker than what I've done, but yeah. Yeah, it's I've been generally I've paced marathons quite well as well. Like I tend to run yeah. relatively even splits. Uh First London I did, I didn't. That was a that was a baptism, that one. But yeah, but right. hopefully I can go quicker than what I've been doing. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And, and so just while we're talking about marathons and obviously we've, we've touched on London, um, I take it you were an interesting spectator uh this year then, some some pretty impressive runs. Obviously, um as as you'll know, I'm a former Blackheath and Bromley man or Blackheath Harriers as we used to be back in the day. And I know we've we've spoken about some some runners in, in the past, obviously, uh yeah. Friends with the likes of Scott Overall. I know you've had a few tussles with him, but even um, yeah, again, it's obviously a little bit before your your running era, anyway. But uh, one of one of the guys who who I was fortunate to meet through the club, um, obviously impressive marathon time, and we're we're pre carbon shoes here. Um, Mark Steinley, two oh nine guy. Does that yeah, name ring? Mark up? Steinley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're hoping to to, to maybe even uh, he's not doing as much running these days. He's still doing a lot of cycling. I see him on Strava feed, so I'm interested to. To, to chat to him later on but also um again um, i'm not sure i think he might still be second claim but obviously we'll, we'll both know um phil sessman um doc, dr phil who's now up in leeds um and obviously i believe you've got connections with leeds as well so um yeah that that was a great run from phil so tell us a little bit about um you know ha- how you how impressed you were with that run um if if you know if you've got got that sort those sort of times in, in your sites um and yeah just the connection with, with leeds ac as well i guess yeah, well, I ran with Phil the other day, actually, uh, last Monday. Uh, oh, wow. I, I just, in general, from a British perspective, I thought the runs were pretty good. Uh, it's just good to see British marathon running doing quite well again. I mean... Yeah, it's really moved on, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. I know shoes have played a factor, but there's a there's a depth to that as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like, Definitely. There was so it can't just be the shoes that are doing that, but like we kind of talked about the first London I did, I was first Britain at 216.50. And there were certain news outlets, as soon as I crossed the line, saw my phone, certain news outlets were like tweeting about you know how the men aren't very good anymore. And because I was my name, like my Twitter handle was getting put into these comments, so I'm just seeing all the the absolute. <sighs> certain comments sort of thing but at that, negativity thought, was there. Yeah, at that time I thought we still had the potential because he had Mo had still to do yes. one thought Johnny Miller could have run a decent one Dowie was Dowie Griffiths was starting to run well again Callum hadn't entertained it but I knew he could run a decent one so yeah yeah just it's just good to see it's obviously a wee bit trickier for myself now with everybody Improving, but yeah, yeah, just those kind of lean years, yeah, it wasn't too great. To all of a sudden, we're pretty competitive now, yeah. I think it's great. safe okay. to say that the Hawkins brothers pretty much 
transform British marathon running. Would you say that? I, I would definitely say that. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah, said it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Uh, well, you can all see what happened around at the same time. Like Scott overall just decided to go and try one off, not almost off the cuff, but he's, he had plans for the qualifying, the five and the ten, I think, for London. It didn't quite work out. So he's like, oh, I'll go and try Berlin, sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. And when he started, that seemed to kind of slowly get things going, I think. Certainly Glasgow 2014 maybe played a little part in that as well, just having the home games. Um, uh, Rio, was it was a slightly slower standard compared to the London 2012, so just things like that possibly just got people doing the marathon. Because you, you ran Rio injured, didn't you? I did, yeah. I got a stress fracture in my sacrum about nine weeks out I think it was ironically wow. at the men's health 10k I, um, I met you at a mile meet I was warming up and I ran I was jogging I was like oh Derek and you ran crutches I was like oh no what's going on here and mm-hmm. then I was like is it still on you're like yeah we'll, we'll see <laughs> and then <laughs> also nine yeah, weeks later you're on the start line I was quite fortunate in that situation for whatever reason they didn't put reserves into the selection policy so it was like if I pulled out there was going to be nobody able to able to take my place sort of thing but yeah right I was I was quite upfront about it as soon as I found out the news I kind of told British Athletics look this is the situation so they were quite happy and then they put that to BOA as well because they get the final say on who's selected and they still selected us anyway uh I didn't start running until about 11 days before it. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> you still, um, you ran like 2.30 or didn't you that day? 2.29, it was... 2.29? Uh, yeah, 2.29. It was quite a painful second half. Yeah, was, I can imagine so. But like you're saying, though, about obviously marathon running, and like, obviously you, there's the shoes, etc. as well, which kind of pushed a lot of times on, but... Would you say your training has changed since those days doing on a Thursday night Esplanade doing five mile hill fartlek to the training you're doing now? Uh, definitely. So, yeah, with those days when I was kind of trying to kid myself on, I was a track runner, you know what it is. We would do Tuesday track session, Thursday would be like hill or grass fartlek, then Saturday would be grass reps. Yeah. So... Certainly when I did the marathon stuff, I've kind of cut down to kind of two sessions, two harder sessions a week, but they are a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, In terms of how my marathon training's progressed, I've probably, like, we used to do quite a lot more hilly runs during the week as well, and we've kind of reduced them a bit, just, again, because it was just getting a bit older, the intensity's... Kind of coming yeah. down a little bit now, so I know that feeling. I run to be a bit flatter, yeah. Would you say like the intensity, like you kind of maybe train more smart now? Because I remember doing hill fart like with you and Craig, and I'd be like a good three minutes behind, but then Craig and yourself at the end would be like, or oh, at the last mile, you'd be like kind of knocking lumps at each other because you really wanted to try and beat whatever time it was. Some yeah. of the times you were doing in that last mile was quite frightening. Yeah, um, train smart. I'm, tra- I'm training a bit smarter. Look, with other, a lot of people know me, I probably have a tendency to do my training runs just a bit too quick. But kind of my early days, I was doing some really. I look back now and I'm just thinking, like, what was I playing at, sort of thing. So it was like, it was days where we like, so we do the grass reps on a Saturday, like. We were talking about there. Sunday would be like your traditional long run day, but then Monday we would go and do like a four mile tempo at like five four fives or something like that. Then Tuesday on the track, Wednesday would be an easier day. It was like when I think back now, I'm like that was just what was a what was a playing it. Yeah, I remember the uh, track on a Tuesday. It'd be like you know like twelve three hundreds with a short recovery. But you and Craig would be doing the reps and like. 45 or just under with like 100 yeah. meter recovery and <laughs> yeah yeah it was just but now yeah I've just 
spread things out a wee bit more as well. I was like, I was too obsessed with trying to get things done in seven days when it's like, can you get things done over 14 days or 11, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, absolutely. Uh, Derek, sorry, just just to go go back home. Obviously, you you, you briefly mentioned uh, your your brother Callum. Um, we, obviously, we're not going to talk too much too much about him today because it's all, all about you. But uh, we'll see if Sean's got a few favours to pull, maybe, and uh, we'll <laughs> see if we can get get him on at, at some point. But just while we we, we have touched about uh, touched on on Callum, sorry, um, I believe you, you there's, you've got another brother as well, which not not everybody within the athletics community will know. People that know you well will, will know uh, Scott, I believe, and. Uh, um, from what I hear, obviously I've, I've not not met him myself, but uh, I understand he was pretty pretty talented as well. Um, maybe even won a, a Scottish national title. Is that is that correct? Yeah, Scott won a Scott won a few races. He won the, like the Scottish Age Group cross country twice. Twice wow. he won under thirteen, under seventeen. He won. I think he won every age group the Scottish schools as well. Um, so. And he won a few tries. Scott was, Scott was good. Scott actually, uh, people won't believe this because of the name, but Scott actually could actually could have a wee bit of pace at the end of a race. Believe okay. it or not, Scott actually had gears. <laughs> but yeah, it was just he did athletics for kind of different reasons, sort of thing. He he did enjoy it, but there was just kind of gradually as he got older, there was other aspects of his life that he. Enjoyed he probably you would say had a bit more of a balanced life, but yeah, Scott was Scott was pretty good. And the fact we wrote is there's about a year difference, so for myself, we were always helping each other in that way because he was obviously what he beat his big brother, and I wouldn't want to lose to the little brother, that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, so in terms of he certainly helped me progress. Good, good, uh, that's that's interesting. A bit of healthy uh, sibling rivalry there. Mm -hmm. Um. Just trying to think what else. Uh, yeah, no, and again, just from speaking to other people that 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 know you quite well. Um, obviously, everyone I speak to speaks sort of very very highly of you, and your your certainly your your knowledge of the, the sport as well. Um, I, I believe you're referred to as a bit of a, a stato in some respects, and you're you're always quite knowledgeable on um sort of who's doing what, what shape they're in, what times they run. Is is that fair to say? I've spent a fair bit of time in power of ten, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I just. I don't know, I just I've always been a massive fan of athletics sort of things. So I can just remember really random races I've seen people do over the years. So I can do that. And then I was one of the people that I don't know, back back when you used to get athletics weekly, you would look through every single track yeah, result. I remember those days. I used to yeah, under, underline the results as well, yeah. So yeah, before rankings, well the power of like Power of 10 didn't appear to what 2006 or something like that. So that's right. Back yeah. Then the only way to see performances was in Athletics Weekly. So you're sitting looking at all your rivals and you're remembering yeah. it all. So it can all stem from that. But yeah. Yeah. So you, you talk about obscure races there. I mean, there's a, a race which uh, one of our mutual friends, I think, has, has taken part in. You might have heard of the, the Cowell 5K. I'm not sure if you're familiar um, in, in, the, in the presence of a, of a, of a winner uh, during this podcast. Uh, I've heard of it. We. Once uh, one of your clubmates, Craig Ruddy, now we got the boat over to watch Sean, but the boat was late and we missed it. <laughs> oh, right. One year we went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, 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 done it myself. I eventually did win it one year. I spent years and years finishing second and third and some sometimes fifth, but then turned up one year and just smashed it, you know. Well, all I will say is, is if you miss Sean running it, the, the boat must have been really late then, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you rascal, Pete. <laughs> Just a wee joke there, mate. We joke. No, fair, fair play. I'm sure you'll you'll go back there one year, Sean, and uh, and regain that that title at some point. But uh, uh, only other thing, sorry, Derek. Just uh, we're talking about some sort of obscure knowledge. I've been told you've also got um, an interesting um, uh, sort of obscure knowledge of random lower league football statistics and, and things like that. Is is that true? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> even though I'm a Rangers fan, I actually had a season ticket for St. Martin, like my grandpa for whatever reason, wanted to see out his days watching St. Mern and I don't know how, like, those that follow Scottish football would know when they get promoted out of the Championship, the first few years were, in the, in the Premiership, were pre it was pretty dross, to be honest. And then, yeah, unfortunately, like he passed away during lockdown, so it was kind of... Oh, I see. 
you know what, I, I didn't fancy going back there, but I wanted to go and watch football. So it was like, I'm going to try and watch every team in the country at home at some point. So there's like 280 odd teams now in the pyramid. So I've kind of set myself yeah. that challenge, but right. That's interesting. the longer it's gone on, the kind of softer I've got. So it's like the amount of Saturdays now where it's been absolutely pouring my rain and you're like, I've got a long run tomorrow, you know. You know what? I'm not going to go and stand in the rain, but yeah, yeah, I've done about thirty three grounds so far. Like, okay. went to watch. I don't know. Was it the ninth division? With Sean one, one, one game. Port Glasgow oh, yeah. Juniors versus Greenock. That was that was quite interesting. Yeah, I, was... I think I heard about that. But no, well, it's interesting. You, you mentioned in a few teams there. Fortunately, my, my wife's in the other room because she, uh, she she wouldn't have taken too kindly to you mentioning St Mirren, you see, because we, we've we got a big, uh, although they're not my team, they are by, by association, but we've got a big Green at Morton connection in this household. So, yeah, we're, we're not we're not too too keen on, on St Mirren, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, being a Paisley person myself, training in Greenock for four years as well, kind of used to the, <laughs> used to the jokes. I know, and it's uh, and and again, I've been told many a time. It's quite ironic that my mine and Sean's team, uh, Inverclyde, we uh, we run in black and white. So yeah, I go. always wondered if that was some sort of sick kind of joke by an original <laughs> member sort of thing. He was from Paisley or something. Yeah, I don't know how the black and white stripes came up, came about. Just that's just what they decided on. I don't know what co- what colour was Spangle Valley. Do you know? For those that don't know, Inverclyde was Spangle Valley and Green Up Well Park. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I think it was blue and yellow. Yeah. I think it was. I think probably the guy he asked is probably a guy called Graham Hyatt because he loved Spangle Valley. Right. I'm yeah, pretty sure he's still got a Spangle Valley vest. I think, I think anyway. you might be right, actually. Yeah. I think it was a blue. Yeah. Well, we've only got about five minutes left anyway, but is there any any chance that Derek Hawkins is going to make a return to the Scottish cross country scene at all? Never say never, to be honest. Um, it's just getting that wee bit harder now with the, the likes of Adam Craig obviously winning it a few years ago. Jamie's very, Jamie Crow's very, very good over 10k and Logan Rees decided to get very good as well. So yeah. um, he yeah. ran, what, 2014 the other day? Yeah, wow. yeah, he did, absolutely. So never say never because... Kabarkin agent Kabarkin actually has some pretty good individuals at the moment, but we've just never been able to translate it into many team races. So Yeah, I've seen that today. Lewis I Hannigan we, won the 10k this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, I reckon we could, theoretically if we could get everybody fit, we could challenge the team, but obviously doing that on the days a totally different ball game. So yeah, I'd like to give it a go for that reason. Yeah, I think the days of winning it individually are gone. Mm, like you said, never say never. Yeah, well, always were about, I always remember that time where the that Shelton had the boys from Eritrea running for them and they had it was at Twelde in the under twenties and <laughs> mm. it was that day and you actually beat was it Twelde in a in a sprint? Yeah, the, boys for the under not. twenty title. Don't know, he must have got lost. But um <laughs> Yeah, well we've been talking about that all week, hadn't we? Like before we just kind of assumed he would win, but yeah, yeah. that was my day. I know, I know that was the, the, the rebirth of Derek Hawkins. And after that, you yeah. qualified for Britain in the in the British cross country at junior level, senior mm-hmm. level, and you know, your marathon journeys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, well, I, don't, I don't think we'll keep you sort of too much longer, Derek. I think me, me and Sean, I don't know if we've got time, we were going to just run through a couple of uh, local race results quickly just to sort of finish off. But uh, no, just, just before, I just had, there was one more from, from me, really, um, just to ask you a little bit about. Um, so again, correct me if I'm wrong. You're you'll still see a, a full time athlete, um, but also you're you've got the the Hawkins coaching as well. Now, obviously, uh, again, this this podcast it's it's not gone viral just yet, but uh, we're expecting big things. So, if you want to just give a little, tell us a little bit briefly about sort of yeah the the, the Hawkins coaching, what that is, who, who's involved with that, um, just uh, yeah for for our viewers to hear, and they might 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 want to take something away from that. Yeah. So. I kind of started it about 2015, 2016, a sort of online coaching. I'd seen it in America, but it hadn't wasn't really about the UK at the time. It's definitely popular now, but yeah, it was just I felt there was a lot of run. I saw a lot of people out running that kind of couldn't really go along to a club. I would always suggest go to a club, but for those that couldn't come to a club, 
we wanted a bit more kind of structured training for whatever level. So I, I kind of started that with Callum back in 2015, 2016, and it's been going pretty well. So we've currently got about 30 runners at the moment of all kind of shapes and sizes, ranges from Coach Max McNeil, who's a 218 runner, it's somebody that was wanting to break five hours at uh, London this year. So, yeah, that's the kind of gist of it. Various levels of services we provide as well. So if anybody would, is interested, hawkinsrunning.com or look at us on our social medias. Brilliant. But, yeah. Right. Excellent. Hey, Sarah. You going to sign up, Pete? Uh well I've I've got some co- contacts already so yeah yeah uh, I've I've met I've met Robert as well and uh, had the privilege to meet both both Derek and Callum so yeah we could we can discuss mate rates uh, mates rates but uh, yeah all I would say on on that note yeah it's 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 a uh, it's actually a good shout Sean because uh, as you know my marathon PB uh, is is still from debut so which is yep. is frustrating that was back in two thousand and eight so yeah I, obviously whatever I'm doing it's it's worked for me. Um, but uh, yeah, getting older. I'm a vet, vet forty now. Um, I, I wish I could get back to the sort of times I've run in the past. So may, maybe there's life in the old old dog yet. So I'll, I'll yeah, speak to Derek afterwards. Yeah. yeah, I think the time's going to run out now. But thank you very much, Derek, for coming on. Yeah, cheers, Derek. Right, Thanks man. so much. We'll Been a privilege. Again in the future after your after your marathon endeavours. No worries. Yeah, good luck, Derek. Cheers. Thanks, no everyone. See you all next time.